Okay, welcome everybody. Uh, thank you so much for turning out tonight for the unveiling of the historic plaque to honor Julius's bar and the April 21st, 1966 sip-in, which took place here 56 years ago today. executive director of Village Preservation. We are a partner today with the New York City LGBT Historic Sites Project. Ken Lusbader is also going to be speaking. We also have with us Helen Buford, the wonderful owner of Julius's Bar. Writer, director, actor, and activist John Cameron Mitchell, who has, his, who has uh, their own special relationship to Julius's Bar. And we've got a couple of surprise guests tonight. Uh, State Senator Brad Hoyleman is here, who has something wonderful that he's going to be sharing with us. And I just want to quickly mention uh, Lucy Commissar is here, who was the journalist who wrote the Village Voice article in 1966 about the joined by some wonderful historians like Jonathan Ned Katz and John D'Amelio. Thank you so much for being here and for everything that you've done. I know that there's many, many, many people in this crowd who have contributed to getting us to where we are today. Too many to name, but hopefully we can all enjoy this wonderful event tonight. So I also want to thank uh, the Village Preservation staff, Juan, Leanne, Hugh, David, everybody for help putting this together and making it possible. So thank you so much. Um, I'm going to just quickly say a few words about Village Preservation. If you don't know us, we are a neighborhood nonprofit. We've been around since 1980. Our job is to document, celebrate, and protect the special architectural and cultural history of Greenwich Village, the East Village, and NoHo. That includes small businesses, like Julius's. That includes um, the special civil rights and social justice history connected to our neighborhoods. And that, of course, includes especially the LGBTQ history, which our neighborhoods are richer in than probably any other place on Earth. Um, I also want to mention, by the way, I'm sorry that I sort of skipped over this, we're very honored as well to be joined tonight by Randy Wicker, Woo! one of the original participants. This is our 19th historic plaque that we've uh, unveiled here in the neighborhood, honoring everybody from James Baldwin to Jane Jacobs, um, from Anais Nin to Alex Haley. Um, it's an ongoing program intended to educate the public about this wonderful history. We want to make sure that when everybody passes by this building, they know the incredibly important things that took place here and that in so many important ways continue on with the presence of Julius's bar here. A couple of brief words about why Julius's is, is so important. So first of all, the building that it's housed in was built almost 200 years ago, about 1825 to 1826. And there has actually been an operating bar here since at least the 1860s, making it one of the oldest continuous, continuously operating bars anywhere in New York City. Since at least the 1950s, it has served a predominantly gay clientele, although doing so, as we will discuss tonight, was a very different endeavor in the 1950s and 1960s than it is today, making it arguably New York City's oldest gay bar. It is also, of course, a wonderful community-engaged, civic-minded, small business, and we're so thrilled that the bar is run by somebody who loves it so much, is so generous to the community, who cares about creating a real sense of community with this bar and continuing it on to this day and into, this, into the future. The sip-in uh, is a uniquely important event. As I said, 56 years ago, three years before Stonewall, when a handful of brave people said, we've got to do something about the way our society treats gay people. That they are criminalized, that they are considered inherently disordered, which was the term that was used, 
that for them to openly gather together was considered a sign of criminality. And this was one very, very, very important chink in that wall to break that down, to, to bring about the dramatic change that we've seen in the last five and a half, half decades where the place of LGBTQ people in our society, in our city, in our country has changed so dramatically and we owe a great debt of, that, of gratitude to the people who were involved in that and helped make all of that change possible. So, um, uh, you know, I also just want to mention that remembering and honoring this history is an enormously important thing to do. Today, so many people know what Stonewall is and what it means. I can remember when I was growing up, never having heard that story, never having heard what that was. A lot of people worked very, very hard over the years to make sure that that history is honored and remembered. Julius's and the Sip-In is another great example of where and how we need to do that. The fact that there wasn't just one event where suddenly everything changed, but there was a lot of hard work that went before it and a lot of hard work that came after it. And that's part of what we are here to honor tonight. So um, I'm going to, I've said plenty, I'm going to turn the uh, microphone over to our next speaker, um, who, as I mentioned before, uh, Ken Lusbader from the New York City LGBT Historic Sites Project, our partner with putting the plaque up here today. Ken. gay bar in New York City and is the site of the 1966 sit-in. As Andrew said, I'm Ken Lustbader. I'm one of the co-directors of the NYC LGBT Historic Sites Project. Joined today with our co-director, Jay Shockley, project manager, Amanda Davis, and regrettably, co-director, Andrew Dulcart, who wrote the nomination along with us, could not be here today. Um, but I'd like to thank our partner, Village Preservation, John Cameron Mitchell, Helen Buford, the owner and wonderful steward of Julius's history, and uh, for collaborating on this event. Our project is a cultural heritage initiative and educational resource documenting LGBT place-based history from the 17th century to the year 2000 that illustrates the community's influence and contributions to the culture of New York City and the nation. We are making an invisible history visible through our interactive map, national register nominations, public programs, publications, school programs, advocacy, and expanding content. And today, to date, I should say, we've created a cultural heritage landscape of over 400 sites along New York City from all five boroughs that are used to educate the public about LGBTQ history. When we launched the project in 2015, there were only three sites of the more than 95,000 sites on the National Register specifically listed for LGBT, LGBTQ associations on the register. And the National Register, everybody should know, is the federal listing of sites associated with American culture and history. So to commemorate the 50th anniversary of the SIPN in 2016, we nominated Julius to the National Register. And today, a few six years later, we are putting the plaque up. But we wanted to make sure Julius survived the pandemic, so here we are today. additional sites to the National Register of Historic Places, making New York City the leader of queer federal sites recognized. So, let's get back in time to convey the importance of the SIP-IN and the visibility of this plaque and what it means to be an LGBTQ marker. Visibility is what the Madison Society, one of the earliest gay rights groups in the country, was working to achieve in 1966, three years before the Stonewall Declaration. <laughs> Share the stage with John Cameron. <laughs> <laughs> you can't hear you. Ah, thank you. Um, just briefly, after Prohibition, the New York State Liquor Authority, liquor authority was established in 1934. It had the authority to revoke the liquor licenses of a bar that operated as a disorderly house, which included serving homosexual patrons. 
At the same time, police departments would surveil bars for homosexuals and trap men for solicitation and raid bars. By the 1960s, the Madison Society, which was established in 1951, and others in the community whose lives were ruined and disrupted were seeing activist actions by the Black Civil Rights Movement and the anti-war movement, among other movements. The sit-in, based on the sit-in uh, counter, I should say, based on the sit-in counter sit-ins but in the American South, successfully recorded discrimination in action when they announced that they were homosexuals and were refused service. This was captured by Village Voice uh, photographer Fred McDowell in that famous sit-in photo and publicized by the Village Voice, thankfully to our reporter here, uh, the New York Post and the New York Times. led by Randy Wicker, uh, this was the first that actually captured anti-discrimination in time, in real time, and eventually helped pave the way for legitimate gay, bar, gay bars as one step along that long trajectory of liberation and, and LGBT rights. The courageous man of Mattachine who took part in that action, Dick Light, uh, Craig Rodwell, Don Timmons, and Randy Wicker, must be acknowledged. Their visibility is now being recognized with this plaque for all those to see and to know that LGBT history is American history, whether in New York State or Florida or Texas or elsewhere. This is especially important as we acknowledge the pushback of LGBTQ rights and increased violence against the community. Making this history public and accessible is critical to understanding our past and the importance of activism while we are placing a tangible plaque on this building, we're helping with the intangible benefits of pride and identity, reducing isolation and shame of current and future generations of LGBTQ individuals. As Dick Leitch said in 1966 about the sit-in and, and the subsequent goals, quote, this is the start of a massive campaign to see that our constitutional rights to assembly are, are freely met and to enjoy the same freedoms given to, who are, to those who are heterosexual. So thank you, and let's continue the celebration and have, and have LGBTQ history recognized as American history. Thank you so much, Karen. Thank you to the uh, uh, NYC LGBT Historic Sites Project for all of the great work that you do. Um, our next speaker, um, I just want to briefly say, you know, we, we do this plaque program, we've been doing it for years. You wouldn't think, but it's often actually very hard to get business or property owners to agree to do this. Unsurprisingly, Helen was not one of those. She jumped at the chance, and that's emblematic of who she is and how she runs this bar. It is completely invested in the community, in being a part of it, in contributing to it, in adding to it, and in celebrating its history, and we're all luckier for it. Helen Buford. to sip and day at Julius. I am extremely grateful um, to Ken Lester from NYC LGBT Historic Sites Project and for Village Preservation and Thank you very much. Um, Randy, thank you for being here. And um, I just wanted to say that to me, this bar is my home away from home. I am so happy that you survived the pandemic. Uh, as Ken said, that was a, a touch and go. But with everyone's um, support um, and emails and financial support, the Gill Foundation, everyone who just saw the importance of that. I also have to say a thank you to my first friend uh, when I started to run this bar on my own. Uh, 13 years ago, my friend Tom Bernardin, who, who was a long time customer, who was a long time customer, who sat down with me and explained to me the history of this bar and why it was so important to this community. And on that day, my promise to him was that as long as I ran this bar, that I will always be a friend to the LGBT community. And she has been. So, 
the one thing that I have learned is that community and, and helping one another is one of the most important things. We are all beautiful humans. We all are uh, Americans who deserve to be recognized. Our history has to be recognized by all. And that it is your constitutional right to, de to request that demand it because it doesn't matter who you are. That is your right. And you should be treated fairly and equally just like everyone else. So I say gay, 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 gay. I don't really care what Florida thinks for that matter. So, but I just wanted to say thank you and to invite you all later. We're celebrating with our Mattersheen party that we do monthly and to wish John Cameron Mitchell a very happy birthday. It's so fitting. It's so fitting that his birthday would be today. So thank you very much. And we welcome you all to come in later after the celebration. Thank you so much, Helen. And let's, uh, let's keep supporting businesses like Julius's because we want them to live on forever.